Welcome back, everyone, to our prayer journey with my Toth as we continue stepping through the book of Mark, one verse at a time. And today we're going chapter 4, verses 1 through 20. And this is probably Jesus' most well-known parable, the parable of the sower. So let's get started by reading the first two verses. And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. So here Jesus is speaking to them in parables and is a huge crowd. And that crowd probably consisted of a lot of people from a lot of countries and Roman soldiers probably there making sure that the crowds did not get out of hand or were not violent. It was not some kind of sedition. And they're all gathered around. And this ministry started from a synagogue in which he cast out a demon and told the demon to hold his peace. And now he has ordained 12 apostles and they're going out and they're giving out the gospel. And so many people are thronging him like the birds on the beach, stealing all of the, the, the food that's being cast out. So Jesus begins to speak. And verse 3 Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. Listen up, look on. A sower went out to sow. In your imagination, imagine this sower going out with seeds in his hand to cast them. In verse 4, And it came to pass he sowed some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground, and did yield the fruit that sprang up and increased. And some brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he goes in verse 9, and he said unto them, He that had ears, let him hear. So listen to this parable and see. Now, Jesus is cloaking his message a little bit, and this is why he's given a parable. He does not want to uh, create a problem in which they can accuse him of something. So he's preaching in a way that is to be spiritually discerned. Now, when you go out and prepare ground, and this is what Jesus is doing, you know, but if you were going out and you were going to sow seeds in your yard, you would dig a hole. You know, I'm very meticulous. If I do that, I put the seed in the hole, you know, in the proper ground that I wanted. But Jesus has given the word out to everybody. Everybody is open to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's casting the seeds to all. But there is prepared ground. God prepared me for a long time before I came to a saving knowledge of him. So let's see what happens in verse 10. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him the parable. You notice they were with the twelve. They were about the twelve. Their hearts were prepared. They wanted to hear what Jesus was saying. You know, God prepared that ground and they're there. They're there with the twelve disciples that were called to be apostles. So they're ready. The ground's ready. So then Jesus speaks to them. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Because they allowed their hearts to be prepared. God called them and is making their hearts feel the tug of the word of God. He goes on. But unto them that without, all things are done in parables that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, least at any time they should be converted and their sins would be forgiven them. You see, I know when you plant seeds sometimes, sometimes something adjusted the rain or something, the seed doesn't take right. If I don't go there and replant that seed, it'll die. If the sun comes up and scorches, it'll die. You know, I've learned to put seeds in planters first. 
a lot of times because the sun in Florida is so strong. So I can move it to a shady spot during the day until it's strong enough that I can put it into the sun. So let's go on. And he said unto them, Know ye not the parable? And how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. Jesus is going out sowing the word. He has passed that on to his uh, apostles to sow the word. When these people here that are hearing the kingdom of God's word accept it, they will be able to sow the word. God will prepare the hearts. You just cast the seeds. All right, verse 15. And these that are by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they heard, Satan come in immediately and take it away. The word that was sown in their hearts is stolen by Satan. This is the world. You know, you go out to the forces of the world and you cast your seed. You have the ground ready. The wind can blow it further than you wanted it to go and it won't fall into the right path. It'll fall among rocks. The seed shows a kind of sovereignty for God. And I don't know where to go on that issue sometimes because it seems both ways. But when you cast the seeds, right, they could fall in the prepared earth or not. And it goes on. And these are likewise which are sown on stony ground, who were, they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterwards, affliction and persecution arise it for the word's sake. Immediately they are offended. You say, I think this bird is getting mad because I'm giving out the word of the God. He <laughs> says, Satan come as a bird and took that seed away. He's giving me a hard time on this issue. <laughs> and they that are which shall by sown among the dawns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becoming unfruitful. I don't know on this issue if this person saved with no fruit or not saved. And, you know, uh, and, and, you know I, don't, I don't know where that falls. But I would be very wary, Christian, if you don't see any fruit. You know, I've gotten caught up in the world a couple of times. And that seed, though, that took root, the plant in my life, would draw me back to Jesus Christ. So if you have no fruit, I would be really concerned if you even have salvation. Seek God. You know, that's why I do these videos. I'm casting seed. You know, if nobody listens, that's fine. All I need is one or two. And you know, I was blessed because I had one or two already who have come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever, you know, God, I cast a seed. You know, somebody else will come in water, but the Lord gives the increase. In verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit. Some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. You know, Christian, that's what we're called to do. You know, you have ears to hear, listen. You know, the call is going out. Jesus wants you to come. You know, perhaps he's using me to prepare ground. And But parking onto the word of God. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, even if he doesn't want you to be. Until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease. <laughs>